Welcome to a demonstration of the EBIS project. In this video, we'll show you a color-based object recognition system deployed on a worldwide scale. Here you see the initial screen of our deployment application. Note the clusters located in Europe, Asia, Australia, and the USA, including Amazon EC2 cloud resources. We'll now initialize the deployment application by pressing init. A special resource tracking server is started as a portion of this process. This is the EBIS deploy GUI. In the top left is the experiment editor, which allows us to deploy an application by selecting the application, cluster, and number of resources to use. To the right is the SmartSockets visualization, which allows us to show how all processes are connected using the SmartSockets hub network. On the bottom, the jobs of this experiment are shown. In this case, we've prepared a number of jobs already. We begin by starting the client user interface on the local machine, as well as a database used to store learned images. You can see these processes start in the SmartSockets visualization. This is the application user interface we just started. It allows the user to recognize objects recorded by a webcam, for instance the Rubik's Cube now in front of the camera. It can't recognize objects yet, as it needs compute resources. When an application is started using IBIS Deploy, it automatically copies the application and any input files to the specified resource. It also automatically starts a SmartSockets hub. This allows us to communicate with the resources even when they are behind firewalls, subject to network address translation, or only accessible through SSH tunnels. We have now started a compute server on a local VU cluster of the DOS 3. You can see these resources connect in the SmartSockets visualization. We now return to the client application, where you can see that this compute server is now available for processing images from the webcam. When we connect it to the client, it begins processing frames at this local VU cluster. We can improve the frame rate of this application with the addition of more resources. To do this, we return to the IBIS deploy GUI in order to start more compute servers. We are now starting additional resources from other DOS 3 clusters. These jobs are all started using the Globus middleware, however IBIS is able to start jobs using a variety of grid middlewares, including a simple SSH connection. You can see these resources connecting in the SmartSockets visualization on the top right. You can see on the top right of the client application that these compute servers are now available. When we begin using a cluster, you can see on the bottom left that the frame rate increases linearly with the addition of these resources. By connecting the other two compute servers to the application, we can again double the frame rate at which we process images. We're now ready to demonstrate the application. As stated previously, this application recognizes objects placed before a webcam, such as the Rubik's Cube now seen. Despite the addition of compute servers, the application cannot recognize what it sees yet because we have not taught it a name for this object, so let's do that now. We'll call this one a cube. We'll also teach it a duck in order to show that the application can distinguish between two different learned objects. Now that we have learned some objects, we will demonstrate recognition. For this, we return to the Rubik's Cube. Despite the fact that the cube is not in exactly the same position, it is still recognized. We're also able to run a version of the client user interface application on Android-powered smartphones. Here we're learning a new object we'll call a cup from exactly such a phone. We also have a version of our deployment application for the Android platform, which allows EBIS to easily overcome the limited computational power inherent to mobile devices through the use of cluster grid and cloud resources. We can also recognize the cube previously learned with the desktop user interface. This shows that EBIS is able to provide seamless integration between all modern computing resources, from desktop to cluster, grid, cloud, and even mobile platforms. In addition to utilizing our own DOS 3 clusters using Globus, we're also able to use additional resources from around the world using a variety of middlewares. The remainder of the jobs in this experiment are also compute servers running on various systems across the world. These include standalone machines, a desktop grid running our Zorilla middleware, clusters in Japan's Intrigger grid, clusters in Australia and the USA, 
as well as resources from Amazon's EC2 cloud. The visualization shows how all of these resources connect together using the SmartSockets network. Addition of all these resources in the client further increases the performance of our application. Unfortunately, the grid is a hostile place. With so many computing resources, faults become a significant challenge with resources leaving a computation at any time due to reservations ending, loss of connectivity, individual machine crashings, or some other fault. We now simulate a crash by killing one of our compute servers. In this case, the server running on our local DOS 3 cluster at the VU. We can see that this cluster is removed from the computation by watching it in the SmartSockets visualization. This takes a little time as our resource tracking does not declare a resource dead until after a short grace period in case the resource is simply unresponsive due to load or network congestion issues. You can also see in the client that our application can gracefully handle the loss of this compute resource as the performance degrades slightly until it is declared dead and the application removes it from the list of available servers. Finally, we are able to stop all resources using our deployment application. By pressing Stop All, IBIS Deploy automatically stops all running applications, copies any output files to the deployment machine, and cleans up any remaining files from the servers. You can see the resources terminating in the SmartSockets visualization. When exiting, IBIS Deploy can save your workspace to make it easier to run the same application again in the future. This concludes our demo. We hope you found it interesting. You can download our software from the IBIS website. Feel free to contact us with any questions or comments.